Disney Dreamlight Valley has no shortage of amazing outdoor furniture and design options. No matter how many valleys I come across, no two valleys are the same, and each valley is amazing and beautiful in its own right. Now, as I say in almost all of my videos, there is no right or wrong way to decorate your valley. What's important is that you do whatever feels best for you. With that said, Lately, I've been receiving loads of requests for tips and tricks centered around decorating biomes. I've gone over these tips and tricks a multitude of times in my live broadcasts. So today, I've decided to make this video for anybody that hits a wall or struggles with decor and design. The truth is, for myself and many others, decorating an entire biome, let alone the valley, can feel a bit overwhelming at times. Personally, I struggle with ADHD, so it's nearly impossible for me to visualize, plan, and execute a build for an entire biome. Because of this, I've developed a method that works well for me, and it has helped me piece together and create several complete and functional biomes. In today's video, I'll be breaking down this process in five simple steps. Now, I want to be very clear here. My intention with this video is not to tell you how to decorate. Many players are already comfortable with their approach to decorating, and that's great. I'm making this video today for the many friends and viewers who have struggled with decor and have personally asked me for advice. You do not have to use or agree with my approach. My intention with this video is simply to help players like myself become more comfortable and less overwhelmed with the decorating process. Before we get started, I'd like to mention that I'm a small full-time content creator, so pressing the like button on this video can make a huge difference for me. If you would like to join our community and play the update live with friends, consider joining my Twitch channel. I'll put the link in the video description. Consider subscribing for more Disney Dream my valley and gaming content and with that let's get started with that out of the way let's get into our first tip start from scratch when you can now this sounds simple but decorating biomes can be incredibly complicated for me the starting process can be even more overwhelming if there are pre-existing structures and environments Rather than struggling to work around certain homes, trees, rocks, or furniture, allow yourself full freedom of expression by letting go of pre-established decor. Doing so can grant yourself a level of freedom and relief that allows the decorating process to feel far more natural and far less forced. Now, this may not be possible in all circumstances. Some homes can't be moved, and maybe you're happy with how certain things are. That's okay. The first tip just happens to set the stage for those that follow. So if you're still unsure about removing all the items in a biome, listen to the following tips before you make up your mind. And that brings us to our second and possibly the most important tip, utilizing pathing to break your biome up into smaller, more manageable sections. Now, this may not be a necessity for you, but for me, this changes everything. Part of what makes decorating feel so overwhelming to me is the difficulty I experience when trying to envision the big picture. Attempting to fully plan a biome before placing my first items almost always leads to me feeling lost or even stuck with my builds. The act of placing paths becomes far simpler when you start from scratch as you're no longer forced to make your path and conform to the pre-existing environment. If your biome is empty, you can simply focus on connecting your major walkways such as entrances, bridges, exits, and other points of interest. Also, keep in mind that the pathing you place does not always have to move in a straight line or use the quickest route available. Sometimes the winding paths that explore the biome are ideal. In some builds, you may choose to use a wide variety of paths, for example, in my meadow build, the Jim and Opal Road serves as the main path while a winding leaf-strewn path travels through the garden. Regardless of the route you decide on for your path, once it's placed, the decorating process can be simplified. Once it's placed, it allows me to establish several different small sections throughout the biome. And for me, this is where I find the real value in this tip. Rather than focusing on the whole biome at once, I focus on these smaller sections and simply take it one section at a time. If some of the sections you've created are still somewhat large and overwhelming, don't be afraid to split them apart with even more pathing. Or you could relocate some of the biome's desired homes to these large sections and branch a path off into them. Some of the best advice I ever received in my life was to focus on several small goals that build up to whatever my big goal is. This advice has always helped me to stay on task 
task, taking things one step at a time, and it's the same concept we're applying in this tip. Before we move on to tip number three, it's important for me to mention that pathing does not always have to be conventional. For example, I used a path of rock clusters in my Dazzle Beach build. Pathing can be created in a wide variety of ways, so please, keep this in mind. Now that we've established a method for working through the biome, it's time to talk about our third tip. I don't know about you, but I tend to get very sidetracked from time to time. Because of this, I often forget what options are available to me. Having a visual reference available can be the difference between me finishing a biome or deciding to walk away and take a break. Once my pathing is placed and the biome is broken into sections, I like to find an open area and drop a wide variety of furniture and landscaping options. Dreamlight Valley has hundreds of decor options and there's no way I can remember everything available to me. So scrolling through the inventory and dropping anything I believe to be a good fit is typically my next move. It's important not to forget to include items from the landscaping and crafting selections. Keep in mind, you do not have to use everything you drop. Personally, I only use a small percentage of the items I drop from the furniture and landscaping tabs. Though, having all of the items out in front of me allows me to make informed decisions as I work through each of the sections. Once you have a sufficient amount of decor at your disposal, you're free to begin working through the biome one section at a time. If you find yourself needing more of a particular item, Remember, some items can be crafted, and you can also order up to 25 items a day from Scrooge's shop. Now let's move on to tip number four. Our fourth tip is focused on advanced landscaping techniques. There are several ways players can decorate and design their biomes and biome sections. Some of my biomes are designed to feel natural and open, while other biomes are designed to be more urban and developed. This section will focus on tips for both, We'll start with the latter. Urban builds are usually a lot more developed, meaning there's far less negative space. Aside from the sheer resource cost, one of the biggest challenges of an urban build is dealing with the item limit. This is why I recommend using an abundance of fencing and pathing when constructing an urban build. For example, my residential area utilizes six different types of pathing and three different types of fencing. Currently, pathing and fencing are the only two items players can utilize that do not impact the item limit. Not only does fencing help with your overall item budget, but it's also incredibly useful when closing off zones and hiding path gaps. However, one severe downside to fencing is, well, it's fencing. Fencing can greatly reduce your freedom to move throughout the biome, so always keep this in mind during construction. Sections and pathing gaps can also be hidden by various items such as flower beds, fountain tiles, leaf-strewn rugs, and more. Just keep in mind, using these methods heavily will have a negative impact on your global item count. Also, just because you're creating an urban build does not mean you can't utilize trees and bushes. There are actually several varieties of bushes and even some trees that can be placed over pathing. So keep that in mind if you still want some greenery. Now, let's discuss some advanced landscaping tips for natural builds. Fortunately, natural builds are not nearly as congested with paths or fur furniture, so the need to blend and cover pathing gaps is not as common. Of course, you still have some fencing options such as the dark wood or bamboo fences, but personally, I try to take a minimalistic approach when it comes to my natural builds. This leads me to avoid most fences, flower beds, and tiles. Luckily, there's a wide variety of small and medium plants within the landscaping menu that can serve the same purpose. Items like tall grass can prove helpful when closing off a walkway, path, or biome section. You can also utilize small rocks to line walkways and paths. Just keep in mind that some of these rocks will act similar to a fence and restrict movement. While most of the items for natural builds are pulled from the landscaping menu, there are actually some items from Scrooge's shop I'd recommend you always keep an eye out for. Here are a few of my absolute favorites. The waterfall, the bioluminescent palm tree, rocky terrain, and the leaf-strewn rug. In my opinion, the leaf-strewn rug is probably one of the most underrated items in the game. It adds a very natural element of color, depth, and dimension to natural builds. 
The leaf-strewn rug does not restrict movement and can be placed at entrances, by trees, or even in the middle of a major pathway without feeling out of place. When it comes to natural landscaping, I also recommend trying to utilize the large clustered items. Within the landscaping menu, there are a handful of these large items. Some contain several trees, rocks, and ferns. Yet, these large multi-items only occupy one space on the global item count. This can prove helpful, especially when you have an urban biome somewhere taking up a large budget. If you happen to find yourself struggling with the item count, check out this video next, which discusses three ways you can counter the item limit. I'll put it in the description down below. And finally, this brings us to our last decorating tip. Try your best to be flexible. It sounds simple, but there is a bit to it. To be honest, I never view my biomes as 100% complete, and I doubt I ever will. With each update, my valley continues to grow and evolve as new star paths and items make their way into the game. We hardly ever know which homes to expect in the valley, and we're often surprised by exciting new additions like the dreamlight trees. Even when first constructing your biomes, don't be afraid to change course or direction. When following tip number two and simply laying my path, I usually place and then completely delete my pathing three or four times before finally feeling comfortable with it. I almost never feel like I nailed it on the first try, but I don't let that discourage me. I just remind myself to keep taking things one small step at a time in life and in the valley. Being flexible and taking things slow is ultimately what helps me avoid feeling overwhelmed. I certainly hope you found today's video helpful. Decorating is one of my favorite aspects of Disney Dreamlight Valley, despite it being a bit overwhelming at times. If you do decide to change or transform biomes in your valley, don't forget to use the camera feature to gather some pictures beforehand. Not only does this allow you to look back into the past, but should you ever wish to recreate a previous build, having the photos as a reference can be tremendously helpful. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to let me know by hitting that like button. Also, consider subscribing for more Disney Dreamlight Valley and gaming content. As always, thank you so much for your time today, and good luck decorating your valley.